Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion and explain how text can be rendered as graphics. Rendering text on the GPU. In our last video, we mentioned that graphics are more than just the cool things often seen in games, like fancy robots or dazzling imagery. Graphics are actually visible in every GUI application. The idea of adding the graphics back in your GUI application is about rendering everything on the GPU, which provides hardware acceleration and increased efficiency. One of the missing elements from most every graphic engine is the ability to natively render text. The CS Paint library can be used to render 2D and 3D graphics, which includes text. By using a fragment shader with an interesting algorithm and calls to the Vulkan API through CS Paint, it is possible to render high quality text on the GPU. Since the intent for a graphical user interface is to provide graphics, why has text not been rendered as graphics? The idea of displaying or drawing text is usually done with software rendering, and this feels old-fashioned. The main reason we decided to write CS Paint was to provide a higher level abstraction for rendering graphics on the GPU. One of our objectives was to find a clean way to render text on the GPU and take advantage of the increased efficiency and accuracy of scaling fonts and resizing the user interface. This is an example of a typical GUI application which renders text on the CPU. The screenshot shows an application which is displaying the word demo in a 16-point deja vu monospace font. This text looks perfectly reasonable and all the fonts look fine and readable in this application. So what happens when this application is run on a high-resolution display, or the DPI is changed in the system settings? How should the GUI application scale the fonts, and is this process efficient? So we tried an experiment and took the previous screenshot and magnified it by 1400%. This is the result you get when looking at just the word demo. It is a bit startling to see that a word which appeared to look decent is actually not drawn with very much accuracy. Enlarging the text simulates what it would be like to run the application on a high-resolution monitor when the image is scaled after rasterization. This often occurs when the operating system or GUI library provides screen scaling for an application that was not originally written for high DPI monitors. As a comparison, we decided to go back and look at the same word in our CS Paint graphics demo. This is the same CS Paint demo we showed in our last video. We are going to move the camera closer to the chalkboard by pressing the plus key. This has the effect of enlarging the text. As you can see, the edges of the text remain crisp and readable. What we are showing is that a well-designed graphics library using GPU-based font rendering will produce clean and legible text at any display resolution. We showed the previous comparison to illustrate the effects of font scaling. There are three basic ways to scale text in a user interface, and they have different trade-offs. Our example of magnifying the text requires scaling up an existing raster image on the CPU. The performance is decent, but the image quality is simply not acceptable to users. At the value we chose, the text was almost not readable. Another approach is to scale up the text by rasterizing the font at a higher resolution. This will provide a high quality image, but the memory usage can be significant and slow down the application. This is how most DPI-aware applications solve the scaling problem. A cleaner approach is to render text on the GPU, which will require the same amount of memory regardless of the scaling factor. 
This process involves more computations to render each pixel, which might sound slow. However, since the work is done on the GPU, which is optimized for this type of work, the performance turns out to be better than the other two approaches. So how do we actually render text on the GPU? The first step is to walk a given string and create a rectangle for each letter. Then we apply a special font texture to each rectangle, based on the letter we want to render. This procedure is similar to applying a wood grain or a marble texture to a tabletop mesh. The key to this technique is that the font texture is not simply an image of the font. Instead, the texture contains a distorted font image, which is created from a TrueType font file using a special tool which is freely available. In the text fragment shader, a multi-channel signed distance field algorithm is used to figure out which pixels should be turned on or off in order to represent the given letter. This image is a multi-channel signed distance field texture for the Deja Vu Sans Mono font. This does look rather strange and even a bit fuzzy. Looking closely at the image, it is possible to see a different square for each letter. When the fragment shader uses this texture image, each of the color channels are used independently to determine whether a given pixel is inside or outside of the letter being drawn. It is important to know that the red, green, and blue channels of this texture are not used as colors. Instead, the channels are storage for a table of numbers. The three values indicate the distance from any given pixel to three points in the letter. This is what determines if a particular pixel is part of the body of the letter. Using multiple channels to encode three separate distances avoids a limitation of the single channel sign distance field technique. One channel does not provide enough information to create clean, sharp corners, which can seriously distort the letter. This is a diagram to show how the process works. On the left, we have a rectangle where one single letter will be rendered. The rectangle is actually composed of two triangles. The image on the right is the capital letter D, which was extracted from the texture. This odd-looking image is applied to the rectangle and produces the letter D at any resolution. A script to generate the full texture image from any font is included with CS Paint. The code to render text using a font image is implemented in a fragment shader. This code is part of the CS Paint demo program. This fragment shader receives six input parameters, five from the vertex shader and one from a uniform buffer. The data from the vertex shader contains the current position in the rectangle. The uniform buffer parameter provides access to the font texture image. The only output from the fragment shader is a pixel color, which is stored in the frame buffer. A variable is used in the shader to set a smoothing factor. This determines how sharp or gradual the transition is at the edge of the letter. For our graphics demo, it is set to a constant value. However, this could be a computed value. One other piece we need is a function to compute the median of three values. In our shader, we will need the median value from the three color channels. We are omitting the code that calculates the color and lighting for a given pixel to focus on the interesting parts. We're showing the exact code which implements the multi-channel signed distance field algorithm. The first line does a texture sample. This operation uses the input texture coordinates to locate a single point in the texture which corresponds to the pixel we are currently drawing on the screen. What is returned 
is a three-element vector containing the red, green, and blue values in the texture at that point. The next line of code finds the median of these three values, which indicates a distance. What we need to know is if the current pixel is part of the body of the letter. If we have a distance significantly less than 0.5, we are outside the body, and values significantly greater than 0.5 indicate we are inside. Keep in mind, we are always inside the rectangle. The third step uses the smooth step function to blend the transition so the letter does not have hard pixelated edges. The last step sets the output color based on the foreground color of the text, modified by the computed opacity so it becomes gradually transparent at the edges. This algorithm is based on a public research project and is considered cutting edge technology. What is stunning is that the fragment shader is very efficient and runs quickly on modern GPU hardware. This is accomplished by having the complex calculations occur when the texture image is created, which only needs to happen once. For more information about CS Paint or Copper Spice, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for our next video.